What I do, Leo here. So today we're going to be watching Overlord episode. Just came out today. Seven. Episode seven. It says Frost Dragon Lord. Oh, yeah. Okay. So a uh, recap. We're finally, uh, we're with a dwarf, with Ainz. We're going to the Frost Dragons to either take back the capital city or the previous capital city of the dwarves. In return, what we will get is runesmiths, which Ainz treasures dearly. And um, we're also hopefully going to meet this Ryudo person because the Korgoa always keeps mentioning him, but we don't know if it's a human. We don't know if it's a demi-human. We don't know if it's a dragon. We don't know what it is. We just know the name. So it could just be the leader. It could just be a dragon or whatever. But uh, yeah, let's just jump into it. Oh, here we go. Right into it. The former capital. Oh, damn. Okay. Circle of life. Oh yeah, I thought about this. They don't think it's um they don't think it's they don't know what death knights are, they just call it like dark golems. We're coming, boys. We're coming. Oh, okay. So the Kurgo have their own agenda as well in the background. Interesting, interesting. Alrighty. This guy could be one of those manipulative type, you know? The one that makes the boast the best out of like a very difficult situation. From the way he's speaking, it seems like he's probably gonna be like, um, hey, go um hey dragons, go fight these dwarves. I don't know how he's gonna tell the dragons to fight the dwarves, though. That's weird. Wouldn't the dragons just tell him to fight the dwarves? But either way, he's pretty manipulative, it seems like from the way he talks and even his voice actor, to be honest with you. So let's see what he does. Oh, yo. The frost dragons. Oh, the white dragon. Frost white dragons. There's so many of them. There's like, whoa, there's like four of them there. Oh, snap. <laughs> That's what you think. That's what you think. He's sitting on top of gold, dude. Straight up gangster. <laughs> Lowly Kwagoa. Okay. I see the dynamic. Okay, so that's how he gets them to fight him. It's like a mercenary deal. We will give you all of our gold if you save us. Hedgin, Hedgin Mal. Chill. 
dragons look pretty cool. Not gonna lie. Pretty cool. No. Oh. He just, okay. I guess he's gonna destroy the castle. Wait, is he reading? Wait, wait, wait. Is he reading books? Is this guy a neat? Or he just likes books? <laughs> yeah. I'm a, so a dragon that's, that's interested in dwarven history or dwarven abilities. Could he be a runesmith? I'm just blurting out random things. If anything, he's good. He's going to be able to communicate. No, don't hide the glasses, mate. We need someone that can talk with irons here. With the oh, he's he's puffing his gut. <laughs> also, dark elves are that common that they can notice aura. <laughs> oh no, he's he's way worse than what you read, bro. He's way worse. So does he not recognize the like intense aura that Ainz is probably releasing naturally? Choose your words wisely, dragon. A bit small. They're not they're not scared, dude. <laughs> If anyone, the I think the dwarf is the only one that's kind of scared, but everyone else, no. <laughs> no! Grass part! He's gonna kill him! Oh. <laughs> Immediately! Immediately! Immediately he said, nope, nah, 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 not worth it, not worth it. Even the Kogor are like, yup, we screwed, bro. This ain't worth it. Did you learn that from the books? Great job, bro. <laughs> your literature saved your life. Good stuff. Respect. <laughs> no, no, Eins. No, he's a good dude. Oh my gosh, he's misunderstood. Don't do this to him. I actually like him. He's pudgy. <laughs> so cutaneous fat. You're <laughs> rarity. He's rarely fat. Sure, yeah. Yeah, sure. <laughs> I can't kill you. <laughs> Whoa. What was that? Oh, he pissed himself. What the? He pissed himself. Who is Angoro Motsumotsu? Is that like one of the divine people? No, 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 no. Thank you, Aura. At least Aura's got a bit of like common sense. <laughs> My gosh. My pet piss on the floor for being so happy. So I think we should piss on the floor because we're happy. <laughs> no, no. What do I? Things are moving fast, dude. I don't know about you guys, how you feel about it, but it's moving fast. We're already going to the dragons? Like, to the, to the, to the main dragon and the, oh, three wives. So that's why there were three other dragons. But yeah, it feels fast. Let's see if this encounters. Like, we're like a quarter of the episode in. This is wild. If we fight the Quagoa in the same episode, this is going to be insane pace. And I'm anime only, so I don't even know how it's supposed to go. Madoheka. <laughs> Sounds like a Pandora's actor. 
<laughs> He's like, bow your heads, dragons. <laughs> <laughs> Submit to me now. Whoa. What? No. <laughs> No, he just, he just, you have three mothers, a birth mother, a mother who raised you and a mother who warm drag. There's three mothers. <laughs> I guess you can't kill any of the mines, but dude, the way he just murked this dragon was. Yeah, I would. Oh my gosh, just fear, dude. Fear, grass part. That's wild. Oh, what was that for? To get the uh, uh, the book of runes, the rune smithing book. What is that? That looks like a world item, dude. Only seven times. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. And it opens, I would love to know what that is. If it spoils it, please don't let me know. But I would love to know what that item was. Kind of looked like a world item. Just to open the box of treasures straight up. Shall tear in full battle mode. Let's go. Wait, we are going to watch the Quigoas. This is crazy. It took 12 minutes to deal with the dragons. This is record pace. Oh my gosh. Just don't go crazy like uh, like in the first season. Don't go vampire crazy mode. If you can. Ooh. But doesn't that mean he did make the mistake, though? Am I wrong? Yeah. What? <laughs> what in the demi erg logic is this? Oh my god! Nah, he didn't signal you to stop because yeah, that's what that's what I was thinking. Oh my god! <laughs> what in the demi erg? This is this is some albedo demi urge type of logical illogical thinking. I love it. I love it. <laughs> She's gonna go back to Irons and be like, "Oh, I'm some your amazing thoughtfulness, <laughs> thought your amazing thinking." How many quago are there, bro? How many quago are there? Whoa, that looks... Oh, God. He's... He's Ryuro. I was right, okay. He, 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 that's Ryuro. It's not a human. It's not anyone behind the scenes. It's literally just the leader of the Quagoa. Okay, cool. But he looks kind of sketch in, in this uh, frame. I'm gonna, you know, give it some leeway because Aura and Shaltier look great in this still frame. But, uh, you know, uh, yeah, he's not looking too good. This looks great. Now, submit, submit now, or you all die. <laughs> submit or not submit. Let us know right now. 60,000.
What? Oh my god, what? Kill each other until 4,000 males, females, and half of the children remain. What? So you want 10,000 Quagoa under irons. That's wild. Hey, is he going to go back there and be like, hey, y'all kill each other until there's 10,000 of us left. And then they'll take us in. That's, that's, that's wild. That's wild. Is he going to do it? Is he actually going to do it? Of course not. Yeah, I thought so. Oh! Oh no, dude! Oh no! Just think of it, guys. Just think of it, right? They were fighting in the bridge, and then these golems, death knights we know, come out and kill about one, two, three Kagoa across the gate, and then they cut the the bridge to kill those two golems, so they don't really know the full scale of its power and ability. Then they realize these two little girls come down to their area, to their homeland capital of 60,000. And suddenly they're like, oh, that's not the golems. We're fine. We're good. This isn't going to be a problem. We're going to be able to whoop these two. In fact, they need more than two because we got 60,000. The second you join or fight, you see body parts. Just this. Just fly. Are they going in a... Oh my god. Dude. No. No. They'll keep killing until 10,000 of us remain. Dude, she is... Oh my god. She's full comboing the Quagoa to death. Look how many. She's piling. There's a pile. She's, she's rising from a pile of dead bodies of Quagoa. <laughs> exhausted to be honest i think he's i think he's lying i think he's just literally throwing them yeah i think he knows he's just throwing them to the death yeah dude oh gosh oh my gosh did they have a choice though did they really have a choice Aura said four thousand males four thousand females and two thousand children so from my from my um reading it seems like it was either they kill each other or Aura and Shaltir take fifty thousand of them. They should have shown us how strong they were from the start. Dude, dude, just watching your people. Eighty percent of your people, right? About eighty percent. Of your people disappear? Oh. Are these all the children dragons? <laughs> Yo, Eins, Eins, you are so... Eins is so fucked in the head, dude. He's like, ah, uh, they all submitted to me. Uh, I kind of wish some of them didn't so I could use their body parts for, like, you know, some good stuff. Like, what the fuck? What in the undead are you thinking, Eins? <laughs> Oh, he's like, come at me. Oh, you're dead, dude. Oh, wow. Oh, wow. Damn. So the frost dragons are immediately under our control. And the Quagoa. And the epi- What? <laughs> what happened, dude? What is this episode? We have control of the Frost Dragons and the Quagoa. And we've littled them down to 10,000 and we've made them submit to each other. And we've taken the rune book from the treasury and taken back the Dwarven Capital on an episode. And the episode's not even over yet. What is what in, what in the need for speed pace is this? What is going on, dude? What is going on? This man is... 
dude just do a jerk knee, dude. Just do a jerk knee. You even got the same freaking body part. You even got the same fur and hair as jerk knee, kinda. Just submit, bro. This ain't worth it no more. This ain't worth it, man. Nice. God. Oh, my days. How not a feel, dude. <laughs> I mean, I knew we were going to curb stop him, but like, this is. Gosh, it's kind of wild. I mean, it's like, but. Hey, he just realized he fucked up. He realized he fucked up. He, re he realized he fucked up. Wait, 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 wait. He realized he fucked up, right? He realized he fucked up and the Death Knights probably died from falling on the bridge. And he just realized that. But I bet you, since Aura said to Shaltir that it was a test, that he was pretending to be dumb, Shaltir is going to be like, you are genius. You are a supreme one. <laughs> that is going to... Uh, that's happening. He's only up to it. Nah, bro. Nah, bro. <laughs> you know? And he's like, what? What? Wait, what? He's like, what? I did? <laughs> what is going on? She's, she's shivering. He's like, ah, you caught me. <laughs> you caught me. I merely made a mistake. Because I was testing you. <laughs> oh, oh my god. Bro. Good for you. <laughs> oh, that last part was kind of wholesome though. Look at all that alcohol. Let's go boys. We're going to eat and drink tonight. Yes, ah. Yeah, you might not be as good as them, but you have the passion for it. No, man, no, man, you are a runesmith. Wait, he's never seen this food before. What were they eating back then? What were they eating? Plants? Just stuff they grew. They didn't have any cattle or nothing? Damn. Being a dwarf is rough. Oh, hell no. Hell no. Not this guy. Nah, bro. Nah. Don't. Don't do anything. To my dwarves, all right? These guys are runesmiths. Please don't do. Please don't do no farms to dwarves. Please. Gosh, this is going to be fucked. This is going to be so messed up if he's actually there for that reason. Oh, he's not. Okay, thank gosh. Oh, my gosh. <laughs> he's like, you took over the empire. And you took over the dwarves, and you took over the dragons, and you took over the <laughs> Quagoa. Amazing. Did <laughs> Wait, 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 wait. What do you want about what? Wait, what? Um, sure. What? What is he thinking? Yo, Demir just, Demir just, <laughs> Demir just picked up another crazy idea, and I don't want to know what he thought of. Yeah, and he's going with it. He's like, fuck it, I'm going with it. 
What do you mean? What do you? What did you? What did you just pick up from that? What did you pick up from that, dude? <laughs> exactly. That's what I'm thinking. I'm fucking scared, dude. I don't know what the hell Demir's thinking. Oh, the show. Okay. Oh, what an episode, dude. So much happened in this episode. And then we get this little tidbit on Demiurge. And every time Demiurge is on the screen, I'm actually kind of scared of the repercussions of just Heinz and him talking for like a minute or two minutes. It's kind of scaring me. But uh, yeah, it's a crazy episode of Overlord. In my opinion, the pace was kind of need for speed. Tokyo Drift fast. Like it was just, you know, Tokyo it was fast dude it was just fast i don't know if it if you guys felt the same thing but for me it felt like there were like multiple steps that were supposed to happen or at least multiple contexts for us to get it um maybe a bit more um involved with the quagoa maybe a bit of context on the dragons before we ended up completely wiping them like i understand we're gonna wipe them right i understand that but I wanted to at least have some sort of um, investment towards those characters, like the Quagoa's leader and the dragons and uh, the the new dragon, the, the the baby dragon that has glasses. Like I wanted to have a little bit of investment before that, and I kind of thought this was going to be a two to three episode thing, but we immediately just whoo, right through it. But I ain't mad about it. I'm just happy that we get to watch some Overlord. But uh, let me know what you guys think of this episode of Overlord. And I'll see you guys in the next one. Peace, peace.